A blessed morning out there. Welcome once again to another beautiful live broadcast. As you know, my name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola, and you are tuned into the Porter's Gate online broadcast. We believe God this morning once again to go further in the spirit, in the heart of God's intention for this new day. We are in the midst of a powerful spiritual reformation and of course restoration the lord is restoring his church the lord is restoring his intention his desire his counsel once again to the earth meaning our lives i pray this morning that as we look into the word of god trying trying to find directions paths and templates that will allow us to carry out that which heaven has ordained for us, that we will all open our hearts and allow the Spirit of God to continue to work in us. It is very crucial to the activity of this new day that we become that vessel that is willing, that is prepared, that is ready to become that being, that expression of that which has been written in the Word of God. So are we want to give thanks to God once again that heaven has placed this mandate upon us, has given us this this calling, this desire, this principle. I believe that no one just jump into this kind of uh, uh, ministry without the steering of the spirit, without the calling and the grace to express the mind of the Lord. It's not the the, the easiest job because uh, you faced with resistance and challenges and all kinds of, uh, um, you know, backlash from the paths of darkness. Of course, the enemy life it loves the status quo. It loves that we remain where we are, that we don't move, that we just, you know, roam around and merry-go-round around, you know, how religion has been defined. But we are tracking the intentions of God. We are. Looking into, amen, the demand of God and, of course, the requirement of the Spirit for our day. We want to become that instrument, that uh, company of people that are willing, that are prepared, that have been, you know, undressed and redressed, excuse me, (coughs) that has been undressed and, of course, have been redressed with the new mind that will allow the church of the Lord to become the very intentions of the Lord in the earth. So this morning, if you're joining us, I once again want to welcome you. I believe the Lord that will be once again reformed, resourced, will be empowered, will be emboldened by the Spirit, We will be graced. That's our desire in this community. We want to bless the Lord for another glorious day. Let, Let us pray. Father, we glorify you this morning. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and love and goodness and grace. Thank you for the things that you are birthing and wrothing in our hearts in this new day. You're doing a new thing and it's springing forth and we appreciate, yes, the way you are dealing with us. We appreciate the demand, yes, that you are laying on us even though sometimes they feel very challenging. But we thank you that there is nothing that you're calling for in this new day that you have not graced us. So we thank you, Lord, that once again, as we open our hearts and yield ourselves for God to your demand, that we also receive the grace to become. We thank you. We honor your name. We glorify your name. We pray once again this morning. Open our eyes of understanding to see the wondrous things that you have established in your word. Help us, Lord, to become the manifestation of the written word. We want to become, yes, that which it was said, and the word became flesh and dwell among men. Give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. Help us to yield our faculty completely, every aspect of our faculty, to the demand, to the requirements, to the need of the day, our spirit, soul, and body, as we are tracking your word, O God, in act, the Bible says they are of one heart, one cardia. Help us, Father, to be a people of one heart, one mind, one soul. Help us to yield oh god to the things that will allow us yes father to become united oh god with your intentions and purposes oh god help us to become part of the company of them that are journey to us the hill the, your 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 place of habitation the mountain of the lord we thank you 
We bless your holy name. Open our eyes, oh God, this morning. Open our hearts, oh God. May we unite in, in purpose, oh God. May we unite, oh God, in, in vision, oh God. Grant us once again, yes, the, the burdens of your heart. Help us to feel the desire, the, the, the intentions of your heart, oh God. Help us to journey further. Help us to walk, oh God, in the newness of your spirit. Uh, you are building your church in this new day. We thank you, oh God, that the spirit of community will become even more clear to us. The spirit of community will become more clear to us. Yes, Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you. We glorify you, oh God. We bless your name this morning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, once again, we want to, I want to welcome you if you are connecting with us, wherever you're connecting from. We want to bless the Lord for his, his goodness and his grace. We have been looking at the book of Acts. Of course, we have come to a point where we have realized that there's no way we can move further. We can journey on in the things of God and, of course, in our own spiritual life, whatever we define amen to be spiritual moving to be spiritual means to move further to come to the place amen of heaven's desire heaven's you know plan and purposes for our life like i always say we are born with a purpose life is about assignment everything that we stand for we represent we 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 seeking for amen are all designed to us one end goal and that is to bring glory and honor to god all right that we don't just live because okay we are we are existing because we we got some career everything about our life is is mirrored is channeled towards one goal one purpose and that is to glorify god so in that context of glorifying god we have to know amen is 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 plans is rudiments for our life we have to know amen the things that he has ordained everything about our life amen are systemically designed amen have been predestined if you will all right to to be conformed to the image of of christ and therefore even the community amen that we belong in terms of a place of worship amen are all part of god's you know des design for our life so that we are able to effectively carry out amen his intention his plans and his purposes for our life that amen we don't live life based on accident we don't live life based on our own preference or choice right of course many of us grow up from that idea of you know making our own decisions and our own choices because uh, if you grow up in a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where you are not even able to make a choice that itself amen is is you know is, is slavery is bondage if, if, if you grow up in an, in, a, in, a, in an environment where somebody will have to define how you live your life, you know, where you go, you know, uh, uh, where, you, where, you, where you shop, you know, uh, you know, all of these things that today people are fighting for and uh, we tag, you know, as, you know, as, you know, a, a, a human rights. All of these things are things that heaven has given to us. So if there's ever a point, a place in your life where, you were limited. You you were not given. I mean, and I'm I'm sure many people grew up from that you know uh, uh, environment. I grew up from that environment. I mean, I could not access certain things, certain you know uh, uh, position, understanding. I could not not because they were not available, but because of the environment that you know one grew up. You know. And so that is self. All right, it's 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 not it's not okay. But then when you grow up even in an environment where you have all the freedom to make a choice, to make a decision, all right? But the decisions and choices that you made were not aligning to, amen, God's desire, God's counsel for your life. Because those who shaped you, who built you, who encouraged you, who, who parent you, amen, never taught you, showed you, amen, the ways of God, the plans of God, the intentions of God. That is even a bigger problem. Because now you've grown up with the idea of, you know, entitlement. And many who grow up with that idea of entitlement, I can have what I want, all right? I can be anything I want to be. I can achieve whatever I want to achieve. As good as that is, that, amen, plays against, amen, the will of God in your life where, amen, you have not been taught that whatever you have been given that defines, amen, who you are in terms of your will, your ability to make decisions, your ability to choose, all right, your, your power of, of choice, amen, must be laid on the altar. 
And I'm saying this as we look into the broad understanding, amen, of, of the building of the community of God. We're tracking, amen, what the community of God is. Many of the frictions and the, I, and the issues that all right, we have come to you know, realize within the concept of the body and the church, amen, a part of the things that we have imported, all right, we're brought into the house of God. And there are scriptures, all right, that speaks to us about, amen, what we do, amen, the kind of life we must live, the mindset we must have, the philosophy that must shape us, amen, when we come into the community, amen, of the ecclesia. Because indeed, the ecclesia is a reflection, an extension, if you will, amen, of of the expression of the kingdom of God. I don't want to say the ecclesia, amen, is the kingdom of God. No, the, the ecclesia has been sandaled with the mandate, with the vision, amen, to, to, to represent, to show, to show forth, amen, to reflect what, amen, the kingdom of God is. So the ecclesia basically is like a is like a school, amen. Yes, it is a school that starts to teach, that starts to build people, amen, from their you know uh, uh, infant stage, amen, to that you know dimension where, if you will, call it a tertiary university state, all right, where they are where they grow up to understand, where they grow up to you know to walk in the knowledge, amen, of of God's will, of God's counsel, of God's desire, and I think that is something that we. Have have to take into cognizance, all right, that the ecclesia is not just a place that we go on Sunday. You know, is 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 a whole, you know, a, a definition of life. The ecclesia is the definition of life. Is 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 the reflection of of what? Amen. Let me put it this way: is a reflection of the opposite of how the world, amen, lives life, defines life. The ecclesia is the opposite of how the world system defines life, amen. So when you come into the ecclesia, you come into the body of Christ, you come into, amen, the the, the household of faith, like the scripture calls it, amen. You are you 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 are detox, if you will. You are detox from values, belief system, ideologies, amen, that are contrary to how the kingdom of God. Because when you come into the ecclesia, you begin to live from the from the ideology, from the belief system, amen, from the values, amen, of what is called the kingdom of God. Remember that the kingdom of God, first of all, amen, is a value system. The kingdom of God is a belief. The kingdom of God is, has its own tradition, has its own currency, its own economy, as we call it. The kingdom of God, amen, is, 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 is a pattern of life. You know, most time when we define kingdom, we tend to look at kingdom from a position of a physical, you know, condition, from a position of a geographical, you know, a, a, a environment. And, and that's good, all right? But we have to, the things of God cannot, as much as we look at natural things to try to understand spiritual things, but in most cases, natural things does not give us the, you know, the full meaning or the full picture of what amen, spiritual things are. Right. There are certain things in the spirit that requires us first to be spiritual in order to understand how they operate, how amen, they, they, they are defined. All right. So it's important that when we see the kingdom of God, yes, we imagine a king on the throne. Amen. We imagine amen, a king with the crown. We imagine a big throne. We imagine amen, a big palace. Amen. We imagine you know, a man here, all right, with a robe, you know, with his ro royal robe. We imagine that man you know, with a scepter. You, you understand? We imagine people surrounding, you know, a, a king's men, you know, elders, you know, a, a leaders, lords, uh, maybe around that, that that person yes all of that you know are also described in the scripture particularly when you read the book of revelation when the, the book of revelation began to describe the throne of god amen all of this paints a picture for us but beyond that picture we have to begin to have you know uh, you know an experience the spiritual experience amen of what this kingdom of god is and i think as much as a lot of people do understand have you know an imagery of what kingdom is uh, uh, that image is far fetched from the reality of what the kingdom of god amen actually is and i think to a certain degree even me that i'm describing this thing I, I cannot tell you that i have a clear full picture of what the kingdom of god is all right we, we cannot because how then do you begin to describe, amen, the, you know, the, 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 the beings, the cherubims, the, you know, the life of the cherubims around the throne, 
and you begin to look at certain things that were ex explained, amen, in the word of God, all right, you, you, you cannot. So until we have amen, a deeper and a, and, a, and a more cogent revelation of who Christ is before, amen, we can begin to say that indeed we are, you know, beginning to understand the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God defines the administration, amen, of the things of God. It is the kingdom of God that defines, amen, the way, the modus operandi of the things of God, amen. It's not the church. The church, amen, has been sent to preach the gospel of the kingdom. The church has been sent, amen, to, to, to represent, to reflect, amen, because the church has been taught. The church is being taught, and the church has continually, amen, been taught by the Spirit. The Bible says when the Spirit of truth comes, the first thing the Spirit of God does, amen, is to confirm and affirm the reality of the kingdom of God in our lives. So if we are believers, followers of Christ, amen, uh, beyond the fact that we are seeking to know Christ, amen, the next thing we should be seeking, amen, is the reality, the knowledge, the experience, amen, of his kingdom. Because the kingdom and the king, amen, walk hand in hand. Like I always say, amen, only in the kingdom you find that the kingdom lives within the king. Let us sink in a bit. <clears throat> only in the kingdom of God that you find, amen, the throne, the kingdom lives within the king. The scripture says that Christ feels all things. Everything, hallelujah, is, cons is consisted in Christ. Now, that is something that I have always sought to imagine, you know, in my own little imagination. I try to understand. And of course, that is something that is too big for any human mind to, to, to comprehend. That the, that the kingdom lives within Christ. That everything that defines, amen, what we can describe, amen, as the kingdom of God lives within Christ. He feels all things. He feels all things. Think about that. Just think about that. That Christ feels all things. That, that principle tells us something, amen, beyond just, you know, a, a, you know, a, a person, you know, as we, as we understand who a person is. So, the revelation of Christ, amen, is important is 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 a high watermark to the revelation amen of what the ecclesia should represent and of course should mean to us and that's something that i feel that we need to press further into in in, in terms of understanding the vision of god amen for his church the intentions of god for his church cannot be limited by human idea cannot be limited by all right, the, the, the systems that have limited how we see life, how we define life, how we, you know, interact, amen, how we com com communicate and commune with one another, how we define relationship and love. Even when we talk about the love of God, we are still very far away. Our love, our understanding of love is very minimal, is very meager, you right, to the reality, amen. Of, 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 of the mega life of, of, of the things of the spirit. Remember, he is the alpha and he is the omega. So, I, I want us to begin to, you know, think in terms of understanding, amen, what the ecclesia is and what the ecclesia is called to represent. I, I, and beyond just looking at function, we have to look at, first of all, our state, we have to understand the state, amen, that we, that we represent, our, our position. <clears throat> that position, that state of life, that condition of life, I believe in many of us, even those of us in the apostolic, amen, have still not fully un understood what that state is. That state of life, if any man be in Christ, to be in Christ is first of all to understand the position of Christ. Amen. If you understand who Christ is, amen, you understand his glory, his power, his authority, his splendor, his majesty. And then you begin to, you know, walk in that revelation in terms of where you are seated. I, I guess that is 
uh, uh, some of the revelation that Paul was trying to amen, communicate to, you know, the, to, the, to the church, particularly the church of Ephesus. In fact, maybe we should quickly go to, you know, uh, um, the book of Ephesians while, while we are on this, because I think this gives us, you know, a kind of, you know, a, a key into what I want us to look at this morning, all right? Uh, first of all, let me also apologize. We started a bit late this morning, but uh, uh, yeah, we, we bless the Lord. You know, let's, let's go to Ephesians, because in the book of Ephesians, Paul, you know, tried to, you know, delve into some of these things that we are trying to highlight. I think we have underplayed, we have, you know, uh, 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 yes, that's the word, we've underplayed the revelation, the position, amen, of, of what the ecclesia is. And therefore, when we talk about the community of, amen, the church, the ecclesia, amen, we, we, we handle that with levity, with a, a sense of, you know, familiarity. I know what this is. And because of that, amen, because we do not discern the body, because we do not understand who we are, what we are, amen, from the dimension of how Christ described and defined his church, Amen. Many things we have done, we have done, including myself, amen, I've done from a position, amen, of, of ignorance. And ignorance is no longer, if you will, no longer an excuse in the days that we are coming into because the Spirit of God is speaking expressly to us. They are, the Lord is unveiling to us the revelation, amen, of his Son, Amen. The, the, uh, the Father is re revealing his son to us. And the son, amen, is revealing, hallelujah, his bride to us. And we are that bride, amen. And as, as, as we get to understand <clears throat> what this bride is, because it's important we understand the context of the bride and the principle of the son. We have to marry those two together. We have to, whenever we speak of, of the ecclesia, amen, we talk about the things of God and the representative of the things of God. We must not just be captured by one pr principle or one, you know, uh, perspective. Perspective can be very subjective. Amen. I I'm very weary when somebody, you know, st stick to one perspective. No. Uh, our perspective, particularly in the things of the spirit, amen, has to be holistic. There are four faces, amen, to the things of God, to handling the things of God. Amen. There are four faces. You'll find that all through scriptures. Four heads of river, amen. Four, four, four face, amen. Of, 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 you know, of, of, of the, of, of the, of the, of the cherubims, amen. If you look at, you will find this dimension of four and four and four. In fact, some people has gone as far as saying that even the, the, the what we define as the fivefold ministry are in fact four. <laughs> well, I don't want to go into that argument this morning. Four or five, but we can see, amen, that grace were given to them. All right. So all of this dimension are reflecting something to us that we cannot choose one side, amen, or stick to one side and conclude. We have to have, amen, a 360 degrees understanding of the things of God. We must be able to see from the north, south, east, and west, amen, of the things of God. We must be able to see from up and down. We must be able to see from bottom up, from, you know, up, up to bottom. We must have, you know, a, a, a depth, hallelujah, of the ways of God. God. Our spirit must, must be allowed, amen, to, to go on a journey, to search deeper, amen, to go further, amen, in, 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 in understanding what Christ defined as his ecclesia. Let me read Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. Paul said, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord, these people were already saved. They already had a faith. They were on a journey, amen, in, in getting to know in getting to relate with Christ, amen, and of course with his body. So Paul is saying to the church of Ephesus, he says, from the first time, amen, I heard of your faith, all right, in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Because it's a, it's a worthy thing to give thanks to God for people who have offered their hearts, who have given their life to, to Jesus Christ, amen. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, I keep asking that the glorious that the, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give to you. Listen to this. This is what Paul is asking for, and this prayer should not be taken for granted. May give to you the spirit of wisdom. 
the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know him better all right this is very important so you may know him better those who are going to handle who are going to handle the things of god who are going to be you know instruments of the formation of the development of the building amen of the ecclesia remember everything that god does amen are done through the ecclesia the ecclesia is the go between amen is the bridge between amen heavenly things and earthly things between the things of god every things that we everything that we represent as that in terms of the ecclesia amen is designed to to you know to bridge to 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 two realms the natural realm and the spiritual realm the realm of god and the realm of man all right so he's saying, I, I have not stopped asking that, the, you know, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. These two work together. Revelation and wisdom work together. All right? You can see things and do not understand what they mean. A lot of us talk about church, all right? but we don't understand what church means. All right? The community life of, of, of the body, amen, has been abused, amen. The spirit, the grace, the anointing, the assignment, all of the things that has been given as a resource for us to build, amen. A kingdom community today has been abused, all right, and has still been abused. And this is why I believe the Lord wants us to go back and tr track this thing so that the things that we do, even our sense of worship, amen, can be done in, 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 in the right spirit. The Bible says God is searching, amen, th that for the true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. You can you see the peering in spirit and in truth, wisdom and revelation. All of these things matter, amen, to how the Lord, amen, you know, releases his life to what we do, how he sanctions, how he approves, amen, what we do, what we represent. Because if we don't know these things, if we are not walking in accordance to these things, then we may be walking, amen, in ignorance and we may be misrepresenting, amen, the, 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 the principles of God. And of course, his divine intention becomes limited within our space. He says, I keep asking that the Father, May give to you the spirit, amen, of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. So we, we, we can continue to turn, up, turn on and continue to amen, increase, amen, the, 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 the light within, within our spirit, amen. And this is what we are seeking for, amen. That, that, I, say I pray, amen, that the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. The eyes, the eyes is there. Yes, you know things. You see certain things. You, you, you have come to an awareness of certain things. But those things needs to be, you know, sharpened in terms of, you know, revelation and understanding. They need to be increased in terms of their operation. All right. They need to be mature. They need to develop. Amen. In terms of how, amen, they work. In terms of how God will have us, amen. You know, uh, 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 you know, operate them. Uh, and and this is. An important principle, amen, in, in the formation of the things of God in our lives, all right? That the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know, did you see the word again, know the hope to which, amen, he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and the great incomparable power for us, amen, who believes the power that is like the walking of his mighty strength, which he exerted, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly realm, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. Thank you, Lord. And every title that can be given, not only in this present age, but also in the world to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything. For, listen to this, for the church. Christ did all this thing for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. <clears throat> I want to take that again. Now, Jesus did all of these things, amen. It says for one purpose, for his church. Jesus, amen, became, amen, the, 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 
the authority, the dominion. Amen. It became, it, it, I mean, he won the power over principality, over, you know, powers, rulers of, you know, of, 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 of the spirit of the air. He, he conquered the powers of darkness. He did all the things that he did. It's important that we emphasize this because when we are looking at who Christ is and what Christ did, we limit it to just one aspect, his redemptive you know, mission for, you know, for us so we can go to heaven. But we can see from what Paul is describing here that it's not just about amen, our, our, our access into, into, into heaven, but these things that Jesus did were also, amen, so we, can, we are able to function as his body on earth. The Bible says, which is his church. Look at that again. The Bible says, in from, let me take it from verse, um, let's take it from verse, from verse, from verse 18. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order. This is why I want your eyes to be enlightened. This is why we need to pray for the spirit of revelation. Amen. So that, amen, we may know the hope which he has called us. And I think that concept of hope is very, very critical. Why? Because hope is what allows us to press further into, amen, the intentions of God. When you look at all that is happening around us today, if we don't have hope, we will, we will give up. But hope is what keeps us alive. Hope is what wakes up in wake, wake us up in the morning. Hope is what tells us that no matter the number of times, amen, we goof, we miss it, we fall down, that we can get up again. We have this hope, amen, this eternal hope in Christ, this anchor, amen, of faith in Christ Jesus. That's a living hope. This hope is what tells us that tomorrow is going to be better than today, amen. That next tomorrow is going to be more glorious, amen, that, you know, than, than today. Come on. When we have this understanding of this hope, hope amen we never give up no matter how they make things tight and difficult for us we keep rising up the church of god keep rising up amen this is very powerful amen the lord just opened my eyes to this thing we have this hope in order that you may you may know you may understand amen in other, he said, I pray that, amen, your, your, that, that, that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened when something is enlightened you get knowledge is 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 illuminated hallelujah we, we are the illuminated ones amen illuminous we are amen the illuminous ones the illuminous generation amen we are the enlightened ones so that you may be enlightened the eyes of your heart may be enlightened there's already light there but we're talking about a greater degree an increase of light an increase of remember in the things of god light reflects knowledge right light reflects wisdom understanding right light amen reflects counsel amen in order that amen you may 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 know you see then that this hope that we're talking about amen comes with a revelation that you may know the hope which amen he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance that hope, amen, is a rich, is the is the wealth, amen, is a is a riches, amen, of our inheritance. It is this hope that we have in Christ. <clears throat> Allow us to continually press further, amen, into the things of God, amen. In order that you may know the hope which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints, and His incomparable great power for us who believes. And then he says, that power, that power, amen, that power is like the walking, amen, that he exacted. It's like the walking of his, of his strength, of his mighty strength. That power, amen, is the expression of the, of the walkings of his mighty, amen, of his mighty strength. This is very important. Which he exerted, he revealed that power. He showed, God showed that power, amen, when he raised Christ from the dead. And when he seated him at the right hand, amen, in the heavenly realms, far above. So, okay, principalities and power are in the heavenly realms, yes. That's why the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against dominions, against spiritual wickedness in high places, yes. But where Christ is seated is far above that realm that we're you know fighting remember when when satan was cast down was cast down from heaven all right and the bible says and there was war in the earth there were war hallelujah fought in realms amen 
that 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 reflects various you know you know uh, uh, dimensions of ex of spiritual existence Jesus amen had been raised far above those realms and we have to know that in the spirit there are realms there are dimensions the realm of God amen the realm that God sits has no darkness. <laughs> darkness is strange to that realm. So when Lucifer, amen, decided to want to dethrone his own maker, it was cast down. It was cast down. And he's still roaming, amen, a realm in the earth that is above the earth, a spiritual realm, and that's why he's able to still control and manipulate a lot of people. Because most people, amen, do not even understand that there is a realm they need to conquer that will allow them to be able to carry out the intentions of God. And that is a realm that Lucifer, amen, and his cohorts dwells. I love this. We're tracking, amen, the principle of God's community, the, the church, the body of Christ, the ecclesia. If, if we don't understand these things that we're highlighting this morning, then the things of God becomes just, busy, you know, becomes another, you know, organization. And the best of brain can build organization. But the kingdom of God is not human organization. The church, ecclesia, the ecclesia, excuse me, the ecclesia is not, it's not something you can build, you know, by by human idea it's not something that can be can be maintained amen by board, you know by board members you know yeah it's not something that can be maintained by you know certain you know individuals you know that must sit and and determine and and define no the lord has amen his own government of how his things how his church must be managed must be must be formed amen must be maintained if, if God establishes an ecclesia in the earth, amen, and people rally around the vision that has been given to that ecclesia, that ecclesia never dies until it, it carries out its intention. And that's something that we want to look at because there are a lot of things that we claim that God, amen, will have us do. A lot of what we call church, you know, somebody say, God, he called me to start a church. But in the next three, four, five months, everything scatter. You ask yourself, Why? Why did that happen? There are things that, amen, we did not understand about the principle of the formation, amen, of God's community, the ecclesia, amen, that allow the enemy, that allow, amen, foreign spirits, foreign agents, amen, yes, to, 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 you know, to infiltrate. And of course, they would try to infiltrate. Remember, they even try to infiltrate, amen, the, the community of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And Jesus was very, very alive and very, very aware in terms of dealing, amen, exposing them. Before people come to Christ, while they're coming to him, he sees into their heart. So, uh, uh, the fact that we build a powerful kingdom community does not mean that the enemy is not going to try to infiltrate it. But as long as, amen, the spirit, amen, the heaven as, as designed for the building, for the maintaining, for the development of his ecclesia are in place, guess what? It will be very difficult for the enemy to, to find a seat, to find, amen, a leeway, hallelujah, in that, in that community. And these are things we have to look into because the nature of the church, the nature of the ecclesia that will be coming out, amen, in this season and henceforth, amen, must be one that is fully, fully, fully resource, amen. And we're talking about this resource, resource from this dimension, amen, that when we understand the condition of the church of Christ and, and, and its assignment and the power that has been vested into her, amen, in terms of representation, it becomes very difficult and, and very, very hard for the enemy, amen, to, you know, to, to have a seat, to have influence within the things of God. Because when God, amen, forms an, a, you know, a church for, for the advancement of his purpose, it's because, amen, that church has been empowered, has been resourced, has been, has been graced to do that. And I think this is something that 
the spirit of the lord amen will have us really look into amen even as we continually talk about the principle of the restoring amen of his church in this season and the formation the the development the advancement amen the coming together amen the building together of of the things of the spirit very very important we cannot amen you know overemphasize this all right the bible says that power amen is like the walking of his mighty strength, which he exerted. We want God to exert certain power, amen, within that which we are doing in this new day. And that power, amen, must start dealing with issues of wrong belief, wrong mindset, amen, false belief, amen, false position in our life, amen, the lies of the enemy that we have imbibed, that we have accepted. All th those power, amen, the power of God must, must, must be allowed to come into, amen, and help us to cast down imaginations, amen, and those high things that have exalted themselves so that when we talk about the building of the house of God, we don't come with our own agenda, we don't come with our own plans, with our own idea. We can go back to the word of God and find principles because they are all there, amen, find principles of how the community of, of the saints must be formed, amen. And these are things that I'm, I'm looking at, all right? I'm just showing us, you know, the depth, the height, the wisdom, the knowledge, amen, that is required of us in the principle of this kingdom community, amen? We see that this kingdom community is one that is formed via, amen, the position, the revelation of Christ within the individuals, within the people, amen, that heaven has brought together. Here is what we are looking at. God exact power, amen, and, and, and that power, amen, was manifest in the what? In the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ. When he raised him from the dead, that is something beautiful. When he raised him from the dead, think about that, that the church begins to function from a position of resurrection, that the church, amen, begins to function in the earth from the position of resurrection. When, amen, he raised him from the dead and did what? And sat him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. At the right hand, amen, at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Christ has been seated at the right hand of the Father, amen, over the heavenly realms. This is plural over the heavenly realms. So Christ is seated, amen, as, as a governor. He, he, he is, is in charge, amen. He's in control. Regardless of what is going on in the earth today, Christ is seated. He's seated. When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand, the right hand, amen, speaks of a position of government, authority, power, amen, and dominion seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far as if that is not enough they qualified it what does that mean to be seated in the heavenly realm amen they said it's far above they recognize that there are certain entities certain beings certain forces called rulers far above all rulers and authority power and dominion this entity function amen in the heavenly realm amen and they are seeking to control to influence things in the earthly realm but christ is showing us something amen the father is revealing something to us and i hope we get this if this is the only thing i'm gonna say this morning amen let it stick into you particularly if you're a spiritual leader or you are a leader in the marketplace because when we talk about church remember church reflects all kinds of dimension of life amen because church begins, starts, emanates from a life, from a home. Yes. Church is not an organization. Amen. It's the expression of the intentions of God in the earth. Church, amen, is not an organization. It is the expression of the spirit of God, of the will of God. Church, amen, is established. That's why when we understand church from a position that, you know, we've been describing. The Bible says they have one cardia. Organization don't have hearts. They have chats, amen. They have, they, they, they have presentation. They have agenda. They have objectives. They have a goal. They don't have hearts. <laughs> the church has got a heart. The church has got a soul. The church is a being. The church is a human being. And that human being is designed, amen, to carry out 
you know, back in those days, I used to frown at people when they talk about church and they're related to numbers. And you see how a lot of men of God will focus just on the idea of numbers. It's all about counting heads. Church is not about counting heads. It's about counting hearts. It's about the heart being connected. I mean, you've got large churches I mean, in terms of number, but the people are scattered, amen, as, you know, as anything can be. It's not about, you know, the, the, the numbers. There's no, there's no place where the scripture emphasizes numbers. In fact, scripture de-emphasizes number. To qualify, the scripture says, where two or three are gathered, in my name, in my, in my, in my, in my, in my order of lifestyle, in my nature. What well, a lot of people define to, to be church, I mean, to me, if you will, is the most presumptive idea in terms of building any organization. And not only am I, people have built church in, in presumption, is a place where people, amen, hide and lie, amen, and pretend the most. Church, if you want to find pretenders, you go to church. Of, of course, the church the man has built, because there are all kinds of agenda, all kinds of things that we have projected above the intentions of God. And that's why people like us, amen, have left that order years ago. We've left that order, and we're seeking to unite, to build, amen, to, to, to marry, to connect, amen, with a living church. There's a church that is coming from above, amen. There is a church that is being harvested from the earth. There's a dimension of a people in the earth today, amen, who represent Christ and his bride, who are the reflection, amen, of the true spirit of the sons of God. And there is this large organization, all right, that is that is demonic, that is infused by all kinds of lies and deception, that is captured by money, that is captured by you know the systems of the world, by the opinions of the world. A church that is trying to you know you know mingle its way into the world system, trying to influence the world, <laughs> but rather it's the world that is influencing her. And we have to look at all of this, amen. The church that we're talking about is a church that was birthed by Christ. And we see what Paul is saying here, all right? It says, this, this, this power that, that was exerted in Christ, that raised Christ and seated him in the right hand of the Father, far above all heavenly rules, amen? Far above all rules, all authority, all powers and dominion, and every title. Mention that title. Christ is seated above them. That can be given. It says not only in this present age. But also in the one to come. And then in verse 22. It says God placed all things under his feet. All things has been placed under the feet of Christ. God placed all things under. I, I'm connecting. Amen. The relationship of Christ and his, and his ecclesia. God placed everything under his feet. And appointed him. <laughs> he appointed him to be the head. The father appointed Christ to be the head. To be the head over everything. Listen to this. God appointed. Amen. The father appointed Christ to be the head over everything for the church. Christ is the head of the church. Christ, amen, is the head of the church. Not the pope. Not the apostle, amen. Not, amen, the prophets. Christ is the, if it's the, if it's the Lord, amen, that has initiated that ministry. If any ministry is initiated by the Lord, the vision of that church belongs to Christ. Because the one who sourced that ministry is Christ himself, amen. It's important that we declare this point, that we talk about this, amen. Christ is the head. The Father has appointed him Amen. To be the head over everything. Amen. Which is the church. Let me read verse 22 again. And God placed all authority. All authorities under his feet. And appointed him to be the head over everything. For the church. For the church. 
which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Who fills everything. Now, this is my take this morning. If we understand this principle, then we are not afraid, then we are not under pressure. The vision must be sourced from Christ. The objective of amen, that vision Amen. Must be maintained in Christ. Amen. The resource, the resource of that, you know, church must come from Christ. If Christ is the one that has initiated, amen, the call, the mandate, the demand, whatever it is, then he's the one resourcing it. Of course, he's got a way, amen, of bringing all kinds of streams of provision into that mandate. That's why, amen, a ministry, a community, amen, cannot be copied. I'm really, I, I put down, you know, this, this note that I've had this note for the past few years now. So I just saw it yesterday and I felt, oh, this is very important. Let me just quickly, you know, add this to what we're talking about. You know, and no two ecclesia are the same. Remember, the body is one. The church is one, amen. But the church is made up of many members, as you have one ecclesia amen, in a nation, in a city, hallelujah, yet the function of that ecclesia, just like the human body, we've talked about that, amen, differs. So, no two ecclesia amen, are the same, therefore, they cannot be copied. You cannot recycle, amen, the idea of a ministry, of an ecclesia, amen, you re recycle it, you can't recycle it. When God brings something, amen, into his house, into, amen, his, 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 his community for a season, amen. Once that season is over, hallelujah, and great things are wrought or done, amen, you don't want to copy it again. You don't want to recycle it again because we do that. I mean, God moved in a, in a, in a place in a, in a, in a, in a, on a street called Azusa in America. Till today, people are still trying to re reinvent Azusa. I mean, for goodness sake, don't, don't we have an understanding, amen, that the things of God is not, is not, you know, digressing, amen, it's not going back, amen, it's progressive by nature. The things of God is progressive, amen. People are still talking about Azusa. In South Africa, I've seen all kinds of meetings, you know, revival Azusa. No, God does not revive the old. No matter how beautiful we love it, no matter how wonderful we read about what God did, amen, you know, in some years, no, no. When God moves, he moves within the context of the season. We can read about it and appreciate what God has done, amen, and be motivated, but God doesn't go back. And that's why I keep saying that while we are tracking the book of Acts, amen, we're not seeking the same experience that those people have. You know what I mean by seeking the same experience? We're not going back to Jerusalem. No. But that which happened in, 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 in the book of Acts is a principle, is a template for us. It's a template for us. When you read Acts chapter 1, that's a template. When you look at what, you know, what, what they did that allowed the Spirit of God, amen, to come and infuse them. Those are the things that we want to do. If I, if I go take you back to Acts chapter 1, you, you're going to see they, they, were, they were all together in one place amen, in the upper room and they were seated. That is a principle that we're tracking. All right? we're, not, we're not seeking the same experience they had there. No. The experience we are going to have today is going to be unique to the assignment that heaven, hallelujah. If, if the people of the book of Acts were to be living in the 21st century, all right? With the same mindset that they had, with the same environment and belief system, amen, that they had, you know, uh, uh, back in the first century. It would be very strange for them to fit into what is going on today. In fact, they will look like a fish out of the water. You get the point that I'm making? Amen. God is looking for a people within the 21st century. Hallelujah. Who is tracking, amen. God's word is not, it's not, it's, God's word is ageless. And this is something we want to understand. That when we read the scripture, we don't read the scripture, amen, with the same old pattern and belief, amen, 
of the, the tradition and the culture or even the geography, amen, that shaped the scripture. We look at the scripture, amen, and we see the principles. We see, amen, the process, the pattern, amen, the concepts that God, that's why the word of God is relevant yesterday, today, and forever. That's why Jesus said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever, amen, because the word of God, amen, helps us to interact even with the, with the complexity of our own day. No matter what, amen, we, 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 we doing, we understand, you know, I mean, if, if those people back in those days were to appear in our day and they see something called a phone, some of them will get a fright. But they have their own way of communicating in their day. You see the point that I'm making? All right. The, the principle of communication has not changed. But the concept of communication and the device, amen, <laughs> are two different, two different things. So we must understand that when we're praying, we don't want to go back to the old time religion and the, the old time, no, no way. We're, no, 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 we're not going into all of that, amen. We want to be in the 21st century. We want to be relevant to, amen. And we want to be committed and we want to use the technology that is available today, amen, to still carry out the very principle in the word of God. To still carry out, amen. The, see, the shared life that they had, hallelujah, is a commonality of faith, amen. You see, the things of the spirit is ageless. The things of the spirit, the values, the principles of God are ageless. You understand? The same issue that we had, that you know God began to deal with in the garden, hallelujah, is the same thing that we're dealing with today. Amen. The same old human nature, no matter how advanced, no matter how resource, how you know, uh, you know, exposed and progressive, amen, man has become. Listen to this. Man is still that same old fallen, amen. There are two kinds of human living on earth, regardless of the 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 the, the time gap, amen, and the and the and the season and ages that have passed, amen? No matter, amen, what man has faced in the 4th century, 15th century, amen, you know, 18th century, and now we're in the 20, you know, 21st century, all of this thing is still the same man, amen, inventing all kinds of evil. Inventing all kinds of evil. Some of the things that we call technology in our day are evil in disguise. And if we don't know how to even manage technology, technology can be very, very, uh, 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 can be very dangerous, particularly to the upbringing of our, of our community, of our children. I'd never say, you know, um, technology is evil, but I'm saying if we don't know how to manage it, if we don't know how to use it, a lot of people have lost their mind just because, you know, technology, I jack, they allow technology to, I, I jack them. Amen. Some people don't even know their children again because they've allowed technology to, you know, <laughs> to hijack their household. So everything that has been given to us, we must, uh, we must know how to utilize them to advance the principles of the kingdom of God. That's what I'm saying. And it is important that we, we get this. So we don't seek to invent something that happened in the, you know, in the, in the 19th century. Or, or, or even in the 17th century or in the 16th century. All right? No, we have to understand that our day is unique. And we all, I may have been born for such a time as this. This is our own day. This is our own time. And we've got to understand, amen, how the Lord is moving within this world that is so called progressive, amen, but is far from the things of the Spirit. At the end of the day, it is the Spirit that defines how we live life. It's the spirit, amen, that defines what is most important in our life. Have you noticed that? It is the spirit. It's not technology, amen. It's not our, our ability to, to, to communicate, you know, efficiently, effectively. It is a dimension of a life in the spirit that gives us, amen, these things that we cannot buy, that money cannot buy, e.g., joy, peace, amen, righteousness, amen, uh, tranquility, Amen. Having, you know, a godly home, a home where there is no fighting, amen, where you, your children, amen, can grow up and, you know, there is love, there is care. All these things are sourced by the Spirit. Much knowledge, much information, amen, does not, amen, increase our sense of tranquility. It is the Spirit of God. 
when the Spirit of God is involved in what we are doing, amen, either in our workplace or in our home, amen, or in raising our children, in school, whatever it is, amen, that thing brings peace and joy into our life. But you remove the Spirit of God, amen, from the best, you know, uh, uh, well-developed, well, uh, you know, resource and well-researched, amen, project. At the end of the day, somebody is going to be losing their mind. Somebody is going to be walking away. Somebody is going to be disappointed because that's how it is. You cannot separate, amen, the principles of God, amen, from, from human life. You cannot. You want to separate God from your life, you're going to end up in sorrow, in pain. All right? And the same principle that I'm sharing, all right? You remove God from the idea of building the things of God. Some people want to build God knows what they want to build. You remove, amen, the principles and the values of God, the desires of God from those things. You're going to end up with a nice, amen, white elephant, you know, uh, 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 you know organization, all right? But God is not there. And that means that at the end of the day, that thing is going to collapse. Because it is, the, it is the factor of God, the spirit of God that keeps everything together. He opposed all things by the word of his power. Not by your intellect. Not by your wisdom. Not by your money. Amen. That's why I keep saying you cannot build the things of God by focusing on a monetary aspect. By focusing on you know, good man managerial you know, uh, uh, principles. No. God has his own managerial principle. When we follow Christ, hallelujah, and he allows us to share one cardia, one heart, and one soul, Listen to this. Nobody will seek to take advantage of another. Nobody will seek, amen, to, to, you know, to, to, to climb over their brother's head to become somebody. Nobody will seek, amen, to want to take advantage. Nobody will want to, you know, overproject themselves, even project themselves, amen. Nobody, amen, will want to, you know, uh, uh, bring the spirit of subordination to the, to the community, it's the same principle in the house. You can have the best of the house. You can have the best of a house and not have a home. Your house can be, you know, technologically compliant, 21st century technology. Everything is at ease. Uh, you know, you, you don't need to, you know, raise your hand. There's no sweat. You've got everything that you need. But yet the house can be as empty as a desert because the life of God is not in the relationship. It's the point that I'm making. It's the same principle that deals with building a church. You can have everything well. You can be able to invite whoever. You fly them in and fly them out the next day. You've got the money. Your honorarium is so high. <laughs> you, you know, you, 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 you've got everything going. But the Spirit of God is not there. Because what invites the Spirit of God, amen, is strange to us. We don't love it. We don't want it. Are you getting the point that I'm making? This, these are very powerful spiritual principles that we are looking in building community. So, in, in building community, you can't copy. You can't, you can't look at, hey, I, I see what they're doing. Some people say, well, I, I, you know, I, I like that church. I see what they're doing in that church. Particularly, you know, if you're from Africa and you've been able to travel out of the country. I mean, you go, you go to America, you go to Europe, and you see because they've got everything organized. <laughs> And so you like, okay, we're going to duplicate this. And you can duplicate what you've seen in America, all right? But guess what? The, the, the environment of, of, of where you place and build that thing, amen, is still controlled by, amen, a foreign spirit, a wrong spirit. Therefore, that thing is not going to work. You've got to understand that church, in building church, you cannot copy principle. You cannot copy, you know, idea. You cannot copy, you know, uh, uh, you know concepts, it has to be born from within you. It has to come from the place, amen, of, of, of spiritual birth. Somebody birthed something, amen, through their spirit. And you just see it, you like it, and then you want to go and copy because you've got the money. It's not God's ordained. It's not going to work. You can't copy it. You can't recycle it. Amen. You can't clone it. Some people try to clone all kinds of men of God. In their, in, their, in their own life. They try to clone, you know, yes, this anointing. You can't clone an anointing. <laughs> they try to clone, they try to speak like other people. A particular man of God. He tried to clone another man of God in the U.S. He dressed like him, talked like him, walked like him. You know, do ministry like him. That doesn't mean that you're the same. Even when you try to stage manage the same thing, it's still not the same. 
community is unique. So I don't try to clone people. I don't try to, you know, I don't flow via... I, I, I love to admire people. And when I admire things or ministry, I say it immediately. I don't hide it. But that doesn't mean that when I see something wrong, I, I will not, you know, flag it out. Immediately I'm going to so talk about it. If I don't agree with what you're doing, I'll tell you I don't agree with you. That does not mean that I hate you. That does not mean that, you know, uh, 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 you know, we can't work together. It just means that I disagree. And I'm entitled to disagree. Because we have to look at, amen, the nature of what we're doing via the standards, values, principles, amen, and the spirit, amen, of truth. Everything can look correct, but that thing may be carrying a different spirit. So we can't tick and say, yes, 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 tick. Because everything looks correct. No, we have to check the spirit behind it. The Bible says, test all spirit to see whether they are from God. And like I always say, if you don't, if you don't have the measuring yastic, you don't have this, the life of God, the spirit of God, and you have not grown and mature in it, you have not been enlightened. So he said, I heard of your faith, amen. I heard of your love, but I'm praying that you may be enlightened. You may be illuminated. There has to be an increase and the child grew in spirit. Certain spirits you will not understand how they, how they walk. You won't even know that they are contrary spirit until you have certain spiritual maturity. There are certain battles you cannot fight. You have to leave them for spiritually mature. Alright? Yeah. In the spirit there are ranks and hierarchies. You know, we live in a day, particularly in this foreign, you know, uh, uh, new age spirit that has been brought into the church. That everybody wants to be equalized. There's nothing like that in the world system and in the, in the creation of God. There is nothing like that. There are, there are hierarchies and ranks. And we're not saying people should use that to control, to manipulate. That's a different thing. But to say we are all equal, that's not true. Even in marriage, there's no equality. The equality start, amen, begins in the place of, of, you know, of a shared life. But their function, amen, is not equal. The man was designed to carry out something. The woman was designed to carry out something. Their mission, amen, is different. And as they marry those two missions together, amen, they become a powerful team. It's the same principle in the church. If we all understand our role, amen, because you're the one giving the most in the church, that suddenly does not make you, amen, the head of the church and doesn't give you access, amen, to, to decision making in the church because you're the, you're the best tight, you know, uh, uh, tight in the church or you give the most. No, no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You've got to understand, amen, that even the concept of giving, amen, is a gift. Let him who give, give. Amen. With the same grace and proportion of, of life and, 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 and capacity heaven has given. You will minister. That's what Paul said in the book of Romans. Amen. Do that. Amen. In the knowledge of your grace, your spirit, your understanding of that which has been given to you. That when you're given amen, such a position, a, a condition of life that you're able to resource the things of God, you see that as a gift. You don't see that amen, you know, as, 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 a, as a lynch. You don't use that to manipulate, to control, to influence, all right? to turn things, to change things. No. We must do things, amen, via the understanding of the grace of God in our lives, amen? The community of God cannot be copied, cannot be recycled, cannot be cloned. Every, every community has got its own spiritual DNA. Got our own spiritual DNA. Just like every human being can be identified amen, by their DNA. Even if their face have never been seen before. Even if they've died amen, for the past 500 years. If their DNA is preserved, amen, you can identify them. And in fact, science can recreate. They can, they can, they can put a face to that DNA. It's amazing. They've got all those technology. And God placed that in us is just remember the science basically is only confirming what is already there. Science cannot create a DNA. 
Science cannot manufacture DNA. DNA, amen, is our own personal ID. <laughs> Every human being has got his own ID. It cannot be duplicated. Today, I've got a laptop before me that I can, excuse me, <laughs> that's a laptop, you know, an iPad before me that I can open by just the blinking of my eye. Just looking at the iPad, it's open. You can, somebody else cannot come and try to steal this except you want to plug up my eyes. That's, that's, that's technology. You say, well, is that part of the 666? I don't know about that. <laughs> Let's not go to that, to, that, to that extreme because you go to that extreme that you don't need a phone. Then you don't need to use any phone again. Because your entire life is in your phone. So if you're talking about 666s, then you already have it if you have a phone. Every phone, amen, has got, amen, a personal code. Even when your phone is off, if they want to track you, they can track you. So let's leave that. But I'm, 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 I'm just telling you one thing. There's a uniqueness to God's dealings. That's why I, I, I'm at rest. I keep telling people, I'm at rest in what God has called me to do. And it took me a while to get to this point. Even with the project we want to, we want to I already know in the back of my head that not everybody is going to support it. Not everybody will believe in what we're doing. Some people will be watching. You see, you have three kinds of people. You know, there are those who will be watching. You see, even when you are asking and when they have, they will never, you know, respond. That, oh, I love what you're doing. I want to give to it. No, they're watching. They're watching. Those ones, they're watching to see how other people are responding. They, if you will, they are the onlookers. But they're following you, but they're watching. But they're following from cognito. They're watching from afar. They don't want you to know, but they're watching. And there are those around who will respond when they see others start responding. All right, okay. Sister, this respond. Oh, so they also will respond. Those are very insecure people. They're even worse than those that are watching. See, these second people that I'm mentioning, they, 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 they are easily influenced by what other people think, by what other people, you know, feels. If somebody likes it, then they also. If somebody likes it, they wait for the second person. They wait for the, when they see that, okay, three, four, five, six person is liking the thing, okay, then they will also like it. You see, I can talk about this because having pastor a people, you study people's life. You study people. You study people's nature. I said there are two kinds of things you must study. Amen. As a spiritual leader, as a you know, as 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 an elder, as a man of God, as a woman of God, you need to know God. You need to know His ways, His nature. Secondly, you need to know the ways of man. If you know these two things, you're done. Your work is settled. Every other thing is is just a, a walkover. So you've got the second kind of people. They are waiting for others. If if people don't respond, they won't respond. But in fact, some of these people, when they see that people start giving, ah, they can come and bring everything they have. <laughs> you see, people like that, you don't need them. You don't need them in the things of the spirit because they, they are like a reed. They flow with the wind. They are, they are tossed here and there. They are, like, you know, they are like leaves. The wind can easily blow them. And if the wind is very powerful, the wind will break them. And then you have the, the last set of people. And you, you've got this in every sector of life, but particularly in the community, in the body of Christ. You've got this, the, this last set of people. This ones, they're not waiting for anybody. They're not in being inspired by what others say, by what others don't say, or what other people do. As, as, as long as the Lord has ministered to their heart, they respond. Those are the kind of people that I'm looking for. And that's why we put things there. So, sometimes, if you don't put certain things out there, people won't know. But the moment they see, ah, there's a need, okay, they respond. You see, I put the picture there on my, my, my Facebook timeline just to let people know that this is where we are. I'm not trying to solicit anything. Just, this, this is where we are. For those people who are, will respond to what amen, they, they see, they, some people, once they see it, immediately they the Lord speaks to their heart. They, they get an awakening. And they do what they need to do. Alright? And that's it. Now, I've done my part. And, and when the time comes, 
I felt it's time to remove it. I removed it. Because you're trying to force, you're trying to, no, I don't need to do any other thing. I've done what I believe I need to do because we must give people an opportunity, amen, to be blessed. That's an opportunity. When there's a window of opportunity for people to give into the things of God, amen, you've got to let them. You, it's also pride for you to say, no, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just going to let people do what they've wanted. No, 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 no. You've got to let people, when there's a need in the house of God, you've got to let the people know that there's a need. Just like if there's a need in a home, all right, we've got to talk about it. How do we solve this need? Because you are dealing from a position of the cardiac. They have one cardiac. All right? Before I even began to speak, the, the, the Lord has spoken to certain people. The people who will give had already given. That's what we're talking about. It could be one person. It could be two. But those who will respond will respond. That's the point that I'm making. They don't wait for every other person. And they don't seek to be known, to be announced. No. They just do what they need because they have gotten to that level, amen, of spiritual maturity. But it's my prayer that those, amen, who, who are still waiting, that God will touch their heart. That they will change. That they will see that this thing is genuine. This thing, amen, it requires, amen, a response, a quick response. And they will do that. <clears throat> All right? But there are those who are just going to be there, be watching. God help us. But what are we talking about? We're talking about building the intentions of God. The house of God. The house of God is going to be built. The things of God is going to be built. And God doesn't use one man. It will be a lie and a pride and a worldly system. Listen to this. For you to think that you can, by your own self, resource the things of God. God has called you. You are the called man of God or you are the, you are the head of the house. All right? And you are the sole provider. You are the, you are, you, everything is done by you. That's not how God designed his things. God designed amen, his work amen, and, his, and, his, and, and, his, and his assignment in community. In community. But that community also, we must understand <clears throat> how it works. So some people are say, or I, I'm, I'm, because I don't want people to say all kinds of things about, about what we're doing. So he's a pastor, but he's also using his money to run the church. Sorry, you're not running the work of God. That's not the way to run the work. If you are the man of God walking or you, God knows what you're doing, and you put, particularly when you're running, you know, God's kingdom initiative, the work of God. God did not call you, amen, to use all your resources. Because that itself is an expression of pride. It's an expression of pride. You have to allow others, amen, to buy into the vision, to give into the vision. It's a kingdom principle. There were people who supported Paul. Paul but somebody said, oh, no, but Paul was working. Well, the scripture only spoke about one or two places, amen, that Paul, amen, was a tent, you know, made tent, you know, made, in fact, yes. And he did that because of the nature of the season he found himself. But the, but, but the Bible never told us that that was what he was doing continually to sustain his, you no. Know, the church was sustaining Paul, and we saw that. He spoke about them who, who, who had the desire to give, that they must give, they must respond. So, I was thinking about this yesterday and I was just having a good laugh with myself that when, before I began, you know, the work of God, I was actually an entrepreneur. I mean, I'd forgotten, I never talked about this. It's just an amazing, I was sharing with my wife yesterday, wow, I remember this thing. You know, before I began ministry, of course, when I finished Bible school, I came back, you know, and in fact, before I went to Bible school, I was selling, you know, shoes. There's a guy, you know, back in those days, Okay, creation, you know, this guy is into making shoes, you know, uh, handbags, you know, handmade shoes. Very good guy. So, of course, I, I, I used to, with, no, I wouldn't say we're friends, we're acquaintance, but after a while, we became friends. I used to, you know, uh, you know sell his, 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 his products, and I used to make good money there. And then, of course, I went to Bible school, came back, all right, thinking, okay, I'm going to start ministry. But I discovered that, no, I needed to walk. I needed to do something. And back in those days, you know, 
I mean, I just went into books because I love books. I love, and a lot of people know that I've got a lot of books. So I began to sell books and all of that. And, uh, and I went into printing, into publishing, printing, no, not publishing, printing. I was into printing. You print for people and things like that, you know. And, and that was how I went into ministry. Because, you know, as a point, even though I was a pastor, I was still into printing. And that was how, you know, I was able to sustain myself. But thank God that I also had people amen, in the church who were supporting me. But not for one day did I ever collect a salary that the church ever paid me a salary. No. But I had enough because there were people supporting who believed in my grace, who believed in the calling. And I believe that's how a true man of God should live. All right? You don't depend on the people. But when the people see the grace of God in your life all right, and they're beneficiary of that grace, the Bible says if, if we have ministered spiritual things to you, is it not natural for you to minister kind of things? And our people understood that principle. So I thank God for, the, for those who, it was not easy because you have to raise people from the, from the scratch. We build people up, all right? Until, to the point that many of them became, you know, uh, 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 owners of their own business and work and all of that. But we thank God that all that happened. And I was thinking about that yesterday and I said, wow, this is amazing. Because sometimes we forget these things. And this is why, I guess this is the reason why I don't really put my hope and depend or I, and wait for somebody to do something. I, I go out of my way. Amen. But we also understand that we have to allow the Lord to minister to people to do what they need to do. Of course, my teaching this morning is not about me. I'm just using that as an example, amen, that in the building of the community, we must understand all these dynamics. All these dynamics must be there. We've got, it's got to be clear to us. We must not be confused, amen. And we must not allow the opinions of men, amen, to lead us astray, to sidetrack us, amen, or to put pressure on us to the point where, amen, we make decisions that are not, amen, informed by the leading of the Spirit. I'm going to stop here this morning. And I believe God, amen, to continue to speak to us and grant us, amen, grace, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I believe once again that we've been able to resource each other. We've been able to, amen, unpack some principles in the word of God. Yes, these are, these are, these are instru instru instructions. These are instructive teachings, amen, because indeed we're dealing with the formation of the ecclesia. We're tracking, amen, what is going to allow us, help us, amen, to become a people, amen, that is well, amen, and Powered by the Spirit, so that when you are going to start something for the Lord, you know what it what it entails. You know what is required of you, Amen. And you pray, f you know, you know, for the right kind of people, Amen, to support what you're doing, Amen. This is very important. We are still, Amen, dealing with the Book of Acts, and we're still in Chapter One. God bless you. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate your uh, uh, commitment to our work, to our ministry, Father. Thank you for everyone this morning that have made it in. In fact, very few people have joined us this morning, but I thank you for the few that have joined us. I thank you for your will and counsel in their life. I pray for grace, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as they go out oh, this morning or wherever they are connecting from, wherever their time zone. I pray, oh God, that your, gra your grace will continue to keep them and enable them and empower Power them, O oh God. Yes, Lord, to live a life, O oh God, that honor you, that glorify you. I pray strength, O oh God, into their in their life, their ministry this morning. Whatever it is that they, that that is that 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 they stand for, that they represent in terms of your mandate. I pray your grace. I pray, O oh God, your mercy. I pray your love. I pray, O oh God, wisdom. I pray, God, that their hands be lifted, O oh God. Grant them men and women, O oh God, who will lift their hands, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. May your mercy continue to reign in their life. May your goodness continue to overshadow them. May your blessing continue to flow into their life. May they enter into their inheritance today in the name of Jesus. May the goodness of God continue to lead you. May the mercy of God continue to guide you. May the peace of God that passes all human wisdom and understanding be your portion this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Your church is increasing. Your church, your house, your ecclesia is growing, oh God. 
yes father thank you for the formation thank you for newness thank you father for new ways yes that you're guiding us new things that you're doing within the community of the saints we thank you god for the giftings of the spirit we thank you lord yes father that christ has been given power over all principalities and power yes lord he's seated at the right hand of the throne yes of heaven right now father we thank you that that power has been has been exerted in the in the principle of resurrection and today lord we can declare that we are benef benefactors oh god beneficiaries oh god of this glory of this power of this splendor in the name of jesus and christ today yes is is given the authority yes to be the head over the church and we as part of that body in the name of jesus have come under the leadership of christ thank you father for the spirit of increase the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let wisdom build this house, O oh God. We bless you. We honor you. Yes, Lord. While we do not look at the things that we see, we focus, O oh God, on the unseen. We focus, O oh God, on the unseen, and we proclaim and we declare, yes, that the things that be not, we call them forth. In the name of Jesus, we call forth increase. We call forth in the name of Jesus, healing, deliverance. We call forth knowledge, wisdom, understanding, the spirit of truth. Thank you, Father, for discernment. Thank you, Father, for word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of faith. We honor you this morning. Thank you, Lord, that your kingdom is increasing in our midst, oh God. Yes, the knowledge of your kingdom is increasing. Thank you, Lord, that we are being illuminated. We bless you. We glorify your holy name. Your peace, oh God is our portion today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. As we enter into a new month, we proclaim in the name of Jesus that the month of May, oh God, indeed will bring peace and joy, tranquility, grace, ability to, to move further into your ways, into your will, in the name of Jesus, that in the month of May, we will continually migrate to the place of your good intention, to the glory of your name, Father. We have prayed. Thank you for granting us your spirit, your Roach, your Holy Spirit is teaching us all things. The Holy Spirit is ministering life to us and we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Once again, we want to bless the Lord for the impartations that we have received this morning, the expression of the ministry of God's word. God's word is alive and well. We pray that we'll continue to increase in that knowledge. So thank you everyone this morning that have made it to uh, uh, join us this morning. I know there are very few people, people that join us this morning, of course, because we also began very late. So thank you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully we'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.